Welcome back, all you wonderful Rise of Kingdoms players out there. This is Dragothian here, and today we are going to be back with another mastery guide. And this time, Gilgamesh is on order for you all. We're going to be doing a Gilgamesh mastery guide. We're going to go over his skills. We're going to go over his talent build. We're going to go over his pairs, his best pairings. And we're going to go over a summary at the very end just to kind of set the right expectation for this new legendary archer Commander, he will be found in your next Wheel of Fortune if you are in a Season of Conquest Kingdom. I can't wait to go over this guy with you guys because he is amazing. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I'll see you on the other side. All right, here we go. So, Gilgamesh. He is, without a doubt, the new meta. The size of his upper chest alone makes him new meta. But once we go over these skills here... Everybody, whether you're an archer player or not, will want to have a Gilgamesh, okay? So first off, the Roar of the Tiger, 1,500 direct damage factor, 30% health reduction for three seconds. Not only does this impact the secondary, okay? So your secondary commander behind Gilgamesh would be impacted whenever you're casting your secondary skill. Something to think about. But just in general, you've got... 30% health reduction. If this is a double rally situation, this is amazing. This skill alone makes Gilgamesh a must target if he's open field and definitely counter rally if uh, he is rallying your stuff. Second skill, Bowman of Uruk. Archers led by this commander gain up to 30% increased health and deal up to 20% increased damage to enemy troops that have fewer than 50% of units remaining. Holy crap. I mean, that's just amazing. I can't believe that not only are we taking away 30% from the target when you cast your active skill, but also you're talking about actually gaining 30% health on top of the whole thing. I mean, what those two first skills alone make this guy incredible. And he's also got three more skills. Let's go over those. Third skill, a king's right passive skill. Archers led by this commander gain up to 20% increased attack when attacking said your stronghold. And... Gain a 1% attack bonus up to 5% every 6 seconds. This bonus can last 10 seconds and stacks up to 6 times. So 6 times 5, that's 30%, plus 20%. That's a 50% attack bonus once that rally is going. Because again, this is a rally skill. Cities or strongholds only. 50% more attack off the bat. You've got 30% more health off the bat. And you increase your delta to your target by 30%. More health from the first skill. And archer gear, by the way, is some of the best gear in the game. Uh, fourth skill. Enkidu's Path. Enkidu. Troops level as commander gain 10% uh, less damage from normal attacks. So that's good. That's a, that's a normal attack damage reduction of up to 10%. Their attacks also have a 30% chance of inflicting a blood craving debuff on targets, afflicted troops suffer damage when healed, damage factor up to 500. This debuff lasts three seconds and can trigger at most once every five seconds. If you can get your skills to cast before your Zenobia, which you should, Zenobia has the uh, support talent tree, but again, that first set of skills takes a while because there is no um, increase other than what you have from your talents and maybe a horn. If you get lucky, you can get feral, feral Nature to proc on skill, which is, again, maybe something you should consider um, when we're talking about his talent build. Uh, you want to get his skills firing off as quickly as possible so that this skill is applicable when the heal goes off for Zenobia, or certainly when you're talking about Attila Takeda. This could also help against that if you're going up against a defense with Attila Takeda or against in the open field Attila Takeda. Um, other healing uh, commanders on the open field as well, if you happen to come across to Richard, Oh my goodness. But you see what I'm saying? You want to have that blood crave go off before the heal goes off. Expertise. You're going to be increasing the, the uh, effect of Enkaidu's Path, which is your fourth skill we just went over. It goes from 10% to 15% less damage from normal attacks, which again, in a rally situation, is amazing. And then you also have a 30% chance of inflicting the blood craving effect and having a damage factor of 700 and... They'll take 15% increased skill damage, which is another damage bonus to your secondary commander. This skill and expertise, plus the primary skill, his active skill, this to me makes him need to be a primary commander. You want to have the bonuses that he provides and the debuffs that he provides be able to be 
active while your secondary commander is firing their skill off. Now, there's going to be two builds, and I'm going to go ahead and do both of them for you. Uh, one's going to be up for you already. The second one is going to be live. This is a commander, again, that you absolutely need to have. I mean, it's just a 100% chance. Now, here's one where if you feel like you are going to be... This is, by the way, one of the, the normal meta archer builds. Like, if you have a, a archer and either skill... An archer and skill talent build, this is it. This is what you want. This this provides the maximum damage, especially if you have a horn as well. Really, really good. Um, this is what you would use on a Nebu. This is what you would use on uh, a YSG if you wanted to. And it would be perfectly fine. Now, I do like conquering. Um, I like the conquering talent um, buckler shield right here. I, I If I was to try and get that, I actually would probably take uh, points out of clarity. I would take out the March speed bu uh, buff right here. And I would also take one point out of a half a point, or it's one point, but a half of a point of attack out. I would also take the attack point out here, and that would get you two buckler shield, and you would have no points remaining. So you would have rejuvenate, you'd have everything on this side except for clarity, which clarity is a 6% damage buff to your secondary commander, which is good, especially in a rally situation, especially if you're going to have like Nebu behind where there's going to be multiple instances of skill damage, not to mention those skill damages can reach 80 to 150,000 damage. 6% of that's quite a bit. Um, but if you want a little more tankiness instead of damage, you can go the buckler shield route here and be perfectly fine. Now, if you want to go full, um, if you want to go full uh, rage, you can certainly do that as well. Let's go ahead and back this out here really quick. And we'll go ahead and go Feral Nature, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. So let me go ahead and get to this point. We're going to need to take some points out of the Archer Tree to get there, though, which is unfortunate because Whistling Arrows is a an amazing skill, an absolutely amazing skill. And I think we're going to have to get rid of Phoenix Tail Arrows as well. It's a lot to give up to get Feral Nature, which is why I generally don't do it. But that's it right there. And this is health, so you want to keep that. So that's your other alter, alternate build as well if you want to go Max Rage. So really there's three builds here. You have the Max Rage build that you're looking at right now. In my opinion, the best build is the one that's got um, the whole Archer Tree and um, Clarity because of who you're going to be having behind Gilgamesh, which is right here. You got one point remaining. Go over and put an attack right there. That's your main build, in my opinion. That's the first build you saw when we switched over to the builds. And then again, you can also take out Clarity away from the skill tree. You can take out the one point in attack here and the two points in March Speed and the one point in attack here and go down and get yourself Buckler Shield. 9% um, uh, counterattack damage taken reduction is nothing to sneeze at, especially when it ticks every single second, okay? So you're talking about some pretty significant um, savings on your dead troops, things like that. So not bad either. You can go either route and you'd be perfectly fine. Now let's jump back in and start looking at some pairs because obviously there's going to be some pretty significant pairs here. From a rally perspective, Nebu as a secondary is going to be incredible. Again, with uh, his primary skill, there's no extra damage bonus from Nebu's primary skill. Um, all the other stuff is passive here, so there's no requirement um, for being like a secondary commander or anything like that. So Gilgamesh Nebu to me is a perfect, perfect pair for Rally and will likely be the new meta going forward for rallies. Right now it's Ramses Nebu. I think it's going to be Gilgamesh Nebu going forward very soon. Another pair, obviously, we just talked about would be Gilgamesh and Ramses. And let me see if I can find him. I think he's up here. Did I just pass him? There he is. My name is Here's Ramses. And Ramses is another great pair. Again, you want to have him secondary. His his stuff will take effect based off of the bonuses that we talked about. Having the, the damage over time does not impact that health debuff that you give from his first skill. Total um, great pairing here. And again, this is going to make your, your rally even more tanky. Remember, Ramses adds the defense as well as attack here. We've got... Um, Mar uh, Archer attack times 40% uh, here, 40% here. We also have some defense at 40% as well whenever this procs out here too. So very strong um, attack bonuses on top of everything. I mean, we could be reaching 300% plus attack between Ramses and Gilgamesh if you time it out right and things work out the way that you should, that way that you want. Some other pairings, again, YSG is certainly always a decent pair with Gilgamesh. I think that 
Really, there's better pairs for YSG, though, and especially in a rally situation. I think your main two are going to be Ramses and Nebu. Maybe Cyrus a little bit, but I, again, I just don't think Cyrus is going to be best for rally. I think he's more going to be for open field. And again, you can pair Cyrus as a secondary to Gilgamesh, and it'll be just fine. This doesn't benefit Gilgamesh at all because it's not additional damage taken, um, or it's not additional damage factor on Gilgamesh. You would definitely want to have Cyrus as a secondary as well. Um, Gilgamesh really should be a primary commander in any pairings that you do going forward. I think you could also do Artemisia on the open field at least. Mm, I think that would be good. I mean, I, I don't think it would be bad at all. Um, you just got to worry about the silence. That would hurt you a little bit. Um, and I think Artemisia is going to have a better pair, obviously, with a different commander coming out as well in the MGE that you want to have her slotted up for um, with a Manatory and things like that. Um, Tamiris would also be a decent commander as a secondary, especially with the first build that we talked about, not using Feral Rage. This could definitely work out as well, especially on the open field. Again, you don't want to be rallying with Tamiris in Season of Conquest anymore. It's just not the way to go. I think that ultimately that's the best play there. El Cid certainly can work, although bottom of the bottom of the pairings ranker for sure. Um, let's see, what else? What else? We've also got Edward. No, I really wouldn't pair Edward with Gilgamesh. Maybe it's a, well, I don't know. Edward primary, Gilgamesh secondary could work. Um, I'd have to do some testing. Because of the health bonuses, you got an Archer health bonus of 30% here. You've got Gilgamesh 30% bonus as well. That's pretty strong. I mean, same thing with Artemisia. She's got the health bonus too. So, I mean, that's not bad either. If you're going strictly for defensive tankiness, Edward Gilgamesh wouldn't be too bad at all. And maybe could be a good, decent rally pair, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. It's just you won't get the benefits of the secondary bonuses that Gilgamesh provides if he was the primary commander. You could always use Edward as the secondary, but you lose so much damage. You lose half your damage uh, with Edward, and that's a big part of why he's so good. So I think I want to do some testing, and I've got Edward maxed. I will have Gilgamesh maxed. I will definitely be, definitely be uh, doing some serious testing for you guys. All right, so let's summarize. What's going on here? Let's summarize what Gilgamesh is, how you should use him, and we'll go ahead and wrap the video up there. So, Gilgamesh. He's going to be your top-tier meta rallier. I've said it about 50 times during the video. I think that also, we've got Gilgamesh being a very decent open field player. You've got pairings that we just talked about that work both as rally and as garrison. Or, not garrison. Rally and as open field. You've got these skills that are for cities and strongholds, but again, it's not the expertise, which is nice. And you can have one skill that doesn't really apply to open field and still be really strong. And the fourth skill, the second skill, and the first skill are amazing enough on their own anyway that you don't even need a third skill, which is nice to have. It's an attack bonus. That's about it. So you're only losing out on a little bit of attack there. That's, that's really the only thing you're losing on the open field, which is not the end of the world by any means. But again, Gilgamesh will be your primary main rallier going forward in Season of Conquest. This guy is meant to take out Zenobia. And again, cheekily, cheekily, he will also take out Attila Takeda, I think. I, I, I just have to say it. I think he's going to take out Attila Takeda. Um, especially with a Manatori as well. If for some reason you wanted to throw Gilgamesh behind a Manatori in a garrison situation, that's pretty strong. <laughs> that's pretty strong, especially if you can get the blood craving effect to go off right before Takeda. Um... Right before Takeda fires off his heel, can you imagine? Can you imagine if this triggers every single time? I know it's a five-second delay here, but I think it's every two seconds. So trigger, trigger, trigger. Maybe it'll trigger twice. This might trigger twice, especially if you're expertise. That's another 1,400 damage factor if it does uh, trigger twice. It may be every second, though, and I may be completely talking out of my ass here. But if for some reason it's every two seconds, then um, th this would work out really well. Anyway, Gilgamesh. He's going to be your new legendary infantry or legendary archer. I, mean, I can't talk today. Legendary archer uh, rally meta going forward. He can be found in the Wheel of Fortune uh, going forward in the coming Wheel of Fortune this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next time. Cheers. Have a good one and take care.